Welcome back to Entrendia's. We're going to take a look at how to get financial statements using Python. To start off, we're going to do some import lines, import pandas. We're going to import the date, time, import time as well, and numpy. So we have our basic Python libraries here. We can leverage the Yahoo Finance API in order to collect financial statements like the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow. So some libraries already exist that already leverage the Yahoo Finance API. And I'm going to show you two Python libraries. First, we're going to look at Yahoo Query. And I'm going to import ticker here. So to start off with Yahoo Query, I want to set up pandas so that it doesn't truncate my results just for the sake of the video. So I'm going to say display max rows is none. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for our columns. So this way, without our line items being truncated in our pandas data frame, we can actually see the entirety of our results. So with Yahoo query, I'm going to store a ticker symbol. And as an example, we'll use Apple. And then our stock is equal to ticker symbol. This creates a ticker object with the specified stock symbol. And finally, we could see what the balance sheet looks like using that function. Then we're going to see Apple as of date, period, etc. Accounts payable, accounts receivable all those good stuff. So we could do some cleaning of this data frame. We don't really need symbol. We already know what it is. It's Apple. As of date, I'd rather see that as our index of the data frame. And then period type and currency code. We know it's USD and this is a 12 month data. So and it's taken up space in the data frame. So we could do some cleaning and some uh, storage cleaning. That way our data frame is a little bit smaller. So to start off, let's save our data frame. DF balance. This is PD dot data frame stock dot balance sheet. So we stored our DF balance and I'm going to call the as of date because I want to set this as the index. But in order to do that, I want to ensure that my date index is truly a date type. So I'm going to say to date time. as of date. So what I did here converts the as of date column to a date type format. Then I want to set the date as the index. In place true. So period type and currency code, we really don't need that taking up space in our data frame. So in case I want to reference these values in the future, I could store the value as a variable.
And since they're all the same, 12 month and USD, I'm just going to take the first row's value and store it in our column. Or excuse me, store it in our variable. And then finally, the DF balance. I only need the second column and then everything else after it. So I could use the iLock to remove period type and currency code columns since we stored these values as of date became the index. So we have period type is zero, currency code is one, and then accounts payable is two, accounts receivable is three, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the first column I want to keep is the second one, which is accounts payable. And then we can check out the results. And there you go. So we have our line items as our columns. And then the as of date is a date type index. So that's the balance sheet. You could repeat the exact same as above, except for income statement. We can get the income statement as a data frame as well. Same thing for the cash flow. Just use cash flow and we got DF cash. So this is how you would get financial statements in Python using Yahoo Query. You can also leverage other Yahoo Python libraries such as Y Finance. So I'm going to import Y Finance. And then now you would know how to do both ways. So um, we can start off with ticker symbol. So this is going to store our ticker. For an example, we could do Apple stock data. So Yahoo Finance dot ticker 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 symbol. So this here creates a ticker object with the specified stock symbol using the ticker class from Yahoo Finance. And then finally, we can get balance sheet is equal to stock data dot balance sheet. Now, similar to Yahoo query, you just say balance sheet, but Unlike Yahoo Query, you don't need the parentheses. So why finance? You don't need the parentheses. This fetches the balance sheet data for the specified stock using the balance sheet attribute of ticker object. So now we could showcase what balance sheet looks like. And there it is. You have in this scenario, you have the dates as the columns, and then you have your line items as the rows. So this may look more traditional to the typical balance sheet, having the line items as the rows, but in terms of making calculations, it's going to be a bit more tricky this way. So we could easily transpose this balance sheet data frame. So I could just do dot T and then that's going to give me the balance sheet transposed. And then similar to Yahoo Finance, query, Yahoo Query, we now have the line items as our columns. Now, an another thing to note, the most recent date is going to be 2023 in the first row. So usually you'd see the most recent date as the last row. So I'm just going to sort index. So I'm going to say a balance. I'm actually going to say DF balance is balance sheet uh, transposed dot sort index. So here I have 2023 as the latest row.
Now let's create some custom columns for our balance sheet. So we could perform calculations like popular financial ratios. Uh, for example, we could do the current ratio, quick ratio, and debt to equity ratio. So instead of having to pull up the financial statement and manually calculate what these ratios are, we could just go to Yahoo Finance API, get the statements in Python, and then let Python do the calculations for us. And then we could chart trends and graph changes as we see fit. So let's do the current ratio first. Now, what is the current ratio? This is uh, to know if a company has enough cash and short term assets on hand to pay bills in the short term. So here we can say I want current assets and current liabilities. How do I do that? Well, we have all the balance sheet figures right here for us. So I'm going to do command F and search for current assets. And then there you go. So current assets is right here next to properties and other current assets. So I'm going to say DF balance current assets divided by DF balance current liabilities. So there you go. So we just created our first custom column and we could repeat this for the quick ratio. What is the quick rate ratio? Well, that is a more conservative ratio than the current ratio as it removes inventories from current assets. And we could remove inventories because inventories are not liquid. So if a company were to want to pay off down its liabilities, its debt, and they ran out of cash and then they had to sell off inventory, they're going to have to sell that on the market. They're probably going to take a loss. It's going to take a couple days to sell that inventory and then actually turn it into liquid cash to then pay off the liability. So a quick ratio would be a bit more conservative considering that inventory is not quick liquid. So why don't we do DF balance current asset minus inventory. So we want to perform the subtraction first, right? Since current assets minus inventory is our numerator. And then we're going to divide this by current liabilities. So there you go. That's our second custom column. And for our final one, we're going to do debt to equity ratio. So what is this one? So stockholder equity and total equity typically refers to the same concept on the balance sheet. So we're going to use stockholder equity, but essentially we're taking the total debt over the stockholder equity. So I can say data frame balance, total debt, and divide this by stock holder equity. So now we could take a look at our data frame and here you go. So now we have current ratio, quick ratio and debt to equity ratio. And our previous data frame stopped at cash financial 
But now you can see cash financial is not our last column since we made three new columns here. So now let's say, hey, I want to know if the current ratio increased or decreased. So I could say current ratio change. And I want to check out the current ratio of the past four years, right? So I want to know how the current ratio changed from 2020 to, to the most recent data that we have 2023. So I'm going to say negative one since that's going to be our last row 2023 minus 2020. So I'm going to say data frame balance current ratio and dot I lock zero. So we can see that the current ratio went down 0.37. And then we could say, yep, current ratio was at 1.3. Now it's down to 0.98. So we can automate the process of wanting to figure out trends, calculate ratios, gathering financial statements. And I can type in another value. Um, it is important to note that some line items for different industries might not be called the same thing. Um, I'm curious if, if Bank of America would work, but let's try it. Okay, see, there you go. So um, we have an issue for this one, current assets. So on Bank of America's statement, current assets is not an option. Um, they don't have a they don't have a line item called current assets. So that is something to be aware of. Not all stocks, not all statements are going to have the same names or the same line items. So just to keep that in mind, but We've explored the Yahoo Query library and the Y Finance uh, library that leverages the Yahoo Finance API so that you can gather financial statements in Python and perform automated calculations, perform ratios, and investigate trends. So I hope this coding video was helpful and fun and exciting for you guys. And thank you for coding along with me. Check out entrendias.com for free buy and sell signals on your favorite stocks, cryptos, and Forex. Check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.